People often refer to Jerry the Monk Hutch as a retired criminal, but the reality is more complex than what we see in movies. Does the concept of leaving a life of crime behind with no consequences truly exist outside of fiction? Some argue that he still exerts influence in the criminal world, owing his success to a brilliant mind, unwavering courage, and a seemingly innocent facade. Jerry's journey began from scratch, as he aimed to escape his criminal life and achieve something greater. Little did he know how drastically his world and identity would change. Jerry, now appearing as an ordinary retiree, defies the expectations associated with his age. Instead of seeking a peaceful life surrounded by loved ones in the tranquility of nature, he pursued a path unique to his own satisfaction. For Jerry, fulfillment involved a world that was far from ordinary, a world he had navigated with a talent for evading the authorities while covertly building one of Ireland's most formidable criminal organizations in the desolate north of Dublin. Although he was gaining a reputation for violence, the man who would eventually be known as the Monk remained absent from any most wanted lists. Virtually no one at Garda headquarters, except for one exception, could put a face to his name. In his early criminal days, Hutch, a young and daring criminal who specialized in robbing stores by vaulting over counters to seize money from the cash registers, was steadily ascending within the criminal hierarchy. Hutch's crew faced allegations of pilfering a staggering 1.7 million Irish pounds after their audacious heist of a Merino Mart security truck in 1987. However, this was merely the tip of the iceberg. Over time, he would carve out a reputation as a disciplined and formidable figure within the heart of the Irish underground. Despite not having been officially convicted for any of these crimes, Hutch and his associates embarked on a spree of some of the largest heists in the state's history, often collaborating with the provisional IRA, Irish Republican Army. The audacious nature of their actions astonished law enforcement and shocked the general populace. Hutch, alongside the Dublin squad of the provisional IRA, is suspected of making off with 2.1 million Irish pounds from the AIB Cash Holding Center in Listdugan, Waterford City, in January 1992. Remarkably, these cases remain unsolved to this day. The Garda suspected that Jerry Hutch was also the mastermind behind the audacious robbery at the Brinks Allied Headquarters in Clonshock, Dublin, in January 1995. This high-stakes operation yielded a remarkable haul of 2.8 million Irish pounds for the Hutch organization. Furthermore, members of the same organization are believed to have been involved in a jaw-dropping heist, where a staggering 7.6 million euros were stolen from the Bank of Ireland on College Green in 2009, marking the largest single crime in the state's history. According to Brian Sherry, a seasoned police inspector who investigated the Brinks Allied heist, the members of this criminal organization escaped any legal consequences due to a lack of concrete evidence. To comprehend the extent of Hutch's success and the remarkable durability of his criminal enterprise, it's essential to delve into his background and shared history with his associates. Jerry Hutch, now in his 60s, spent his formative years in the downtrodden, socially disadvantaged neighborhood of Lower Buckingham Street in North Dublin. This area was plagued by the pervasive societal issues of drug addiction, unemployment, and low educational opportunities. Jerry's parents, Patrick and Julia, belonged to the working class. He was known for his reclusive nature, often choosing to remain within the confines of his neighborhood and socializing sparingly. In March 1987, Jerry Hutch tied the knot with Patricia Fowler, a local girl from their neighborhood. The couple eventually welcomed five children, all of whom received education in private schools. Their residence in the North Inner City, a region sandwiched between Dublin city center and more affluent suburbs like Clontarf, provided fertile ground for community engagement, militant republicanism, and opportunistic crime. During the 1980s and 1990s, the neighborhood witnessed a catastrophic impact as it became one of the first areas to be ravaged by the heroin epidemic, leading to a generation lost to addiction and a growing mistrust of the Garda among its residents. In response to this crisis, locals organized concerned parents groups, often sponsored by the provisional IRA, and took matters into their own hands by confronting and sometimes resorting to violent measures against heroin traffickers, including harassment, murder, or the destruction of their homes. From this tumultuous backdrop, Hutch and his gang emerged from the shadows to establish one of the most formidable and enduring criminal organizations to ever surface from Ireland's underworld. What sets this gang apart is its uniqueness in modern Ireland. Unlike the typical street-based gangs comprising members from the same family or close-knit relationships built on trust, this gang is a throwback to a bygone era. It follows a patriarchal, tribal structure 
primarily consisting of individuals from Dublin's north in a city who are bound by blood, marriage, or kinship. The group maintains a tight-knit bond, marked by deep distrust of outsiders. Nonetheless, its members operate both independently and in collaboration with other criminal organizations. Garda intelligence suggests that the ongoing feud with the Kinahan cartel has only served to strengthen the Hutch organization. Jerry Hutch, often depicted as the honest criminal, portrays himself as a provider for his family who, out of necessity and financial despair, became entangled in a life of crime. Those who have insight into Jerry Hutch's character assert that he often argued that honest individuals are destined to lose. It's challenging to overemphasize the influence and dominance held by Hutch and his gang within the north inner city of Dublin. When he was accused of involvement in the murder of David Byrne at the Regency Hotel, social media campaigns sprung up in his defense, amassing thousands of supporters. Even behind bars, he received birthday cards from well-wishers. Criticism of him is a rarity, with many drawing comparisons to the legendary figure of Robin Hood. However, the path of this criminal enterprise has been marked by violence. Several of his partners met brutal ends, including Mel Cox, who was slain in Blanchardstown following the Marino Mart heist, and Patrick Shanahan, who was assassinated in October 1994. These murders remain unsolved mysteries, further shrouding the gang in an aura of enigma. Some members have simply vanished without a trace. The audacious attack on the Regency Hotel and the subsequent investigation sent shockwaves through Garda headquarters, the Justice Department, and the public, shattering any complacency that may have existed. The criminal probe unveiled the group's covert expansion, its infiltration of law enforcement agencies, and its substantial responsibility for a wide range of criminal activities, including drug trafficking, contraband smuggling, and fraud. It had amassed tens of millions of euros through these illicit ventures. It's believed that Jerry Hutch is now wealthier than ever before, which raises disconcerting questions for Garda headquarters. The failure of Garda intelligence to identify the assault plot or even deploy officers to monitor the event is now regarded as one of the most significant intelligence failures in the history of the force. Jerry Hutch's enduring legacy may very well be the establishment of a mafia-like criminal network bearing his family name, one that is likely to persist and potentially expand even after his time. This 60-year-old man faced trial for the murder of David Byrne, who was shot six times at a crowded boxing weigh-in event held at the Regency Hotel in Dublin. Hutch, famously known as the Monk, was ultimately declared not guilty after a 52-day trial in Ireland's non-jury special criminal courts, a trial during which he chose not to testify. The verdict was rendered by Miss Justice Tara Burns, who suggested that there was a reasonable possibility that the Regency shooting had been orchestrated by his brother Patsy Hutch, while Jerry Hutch had emerged as the family's leader. Many are lured by the allure of the opulent criminal life, but not everyone can afford its steep price. In the end, a heavy toll is exacted for such a choice. Some individuals opt to distance themselves from this path, deeming it not worth the consequences, while others persist in the dangerous game, seemingly undeterred by the potential repercussions. The question that looms is whether the same fate awaits all those entangled in this world, or if some manage to find an escape. Opinions on this matter are divided, with no definitive answer. If you found this video informative and would like more content in a similar vein, please show your support by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Feel free to leave a comment sharing your thoughts on this intriguing figure and explore more Irish gangland videos in our playlists, and we will see you there.